Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. J.K. Rowling has hit out, really, at justice systems all over the world. Um, a justice, uh, sorry, an Australian judge um, accused her of misunderstanding protocols because she uh, did not accept that men who wore frocks and called themselves Wendy were all of a sudden magically turned into women. Uh, and she's saying that women who have been attacked, sometimes hard by men who then throw on their frock and pretend to be women are then treated as women by the courts and that lessens firstly the punishments they tend to get but also it makes it harder for these women to come forward and try and say that this man attacked me because they have to refer to this now person this man as a woman in the court and they're saying this woman attacked me and hard me and in some places, that's legally not possible. For example, in Scotland, the, the uh, R can only occur by a man. A woman cannot commit it. But if a woman, uh, if a man pretends to be a woman, as he's recognised by the court as a woman, he cannot therefore be charged with that crime. Should the gender recognition bill go through, for example. Uh, and she's saying that all over the world, this you know the legal systems have this obsession with simply accepting that the mentally ill men who throw on a frock are suddenly women when it's clear that they're not. We'll take a look at this and see why she's up in arms about it again. And I think it's something that we can all stand behind JK on this one as well. Here goes. So JK Rowling says women are losing faith in justice systems around the world. As she says, transgender leaves victims traumatised. We need to stop this, to stop this just simple acceptance that because some mentally ill man throws on a frock and calls himself Susan, that he's automatically a woman. He isn't. He's still a predatory man. He's still a man in every sense of the word, except in the, word, the eyes of the law, because of some for some reason they won't accept reality. They're going along with this guy's delusion. They're joining in in what is clearly a lie. He's not a woman. He's a man. He's got man's musculature, a man's strength, a man's sexual desires, and 99 times out of 100, still got his cock and balls. He's still a threat to women. The Edinburgh-based Harry Potter author hit out after an Australian judge accused her of misunderstanding protocol around the using preferred gender in court. I don't give a flying fuck about preferred genders. If they want to have a preferred gender, that's fine with them. They have the right to have a preferred gender. I have the right to what I call them using my preferred genders. And my deeply held philosophical belief, which is what you use to get away with it, says that a man in a frog is still a man. Because there you go. That's the reality. Now, he can call himself what he wants, but he's got no right to get me to call him what he wants. That's an entirely different thing. And so I will, for example, continue calling a man in a frock a man. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, they can do that will convince me to call them a woman. Ever. And if I have to go to jail for it, I will go to jail for it. Because it isn't a preferred pronoun. It's what they actually physically are. And I won't tell tales. I won't lie. Anyway, J.K. Rowling has said women across the world are losing faith in justice systems due to males accused of sexual violence being referred to as women in court. The Harry Potter author had hit out at the Australian state of South Australia after reports suggested an accused should be referred to by their chosen gender as a matter of respect. This man has attacked a woman. Tell me, why does he deserve any respect whatsoever? What he deserves is his balls cut off and that's at least halfway to making him the woman he so desperately wants to be. And then it also makes it a lot safer for real women. Uh, it, mean, it means men accused of R could identify themselves as females if a case goes to court. Rowling, 58, fears it could lead to victims being forced to refer to their attackers as a woman when giving evidence, even though it clearly wasn't a crime of a woman. Chief Justice of the South, Australian, uh, South Australia, Chris Caracas, has issued a statement highly critical of Edinburgh-based author saying there is no presumption that an accused must be referred to as their chosen gender. But Rowling remains unconvinced, as indeed do 99.99% of the world who don't live with their heads firmly up their own ass, 
or frequently up the arse of a trans lobby. She said Mr Karaki's assurance was welcome but says the practice note in the state takes the ideological position that the use of preferred gender pronouns is a matter of respect. She added the natural inference is that a woman would be considered guilty of diff disrespect if she alone in the courtroom described her male attacker as a man while all other court officials were addressing describing as a woman. This is not a hypothetical situation, she said. The judge will be aware, if he's informed himself, as he implies I have not, that I've already cited an example where a 60-year-old woman was violently assaulted by a 26-year-old trans-identified male. She was chided by the judge for displaying bad grace by not using her attacker's preferred pronouns. Yeah, but I don't give a shit about his pronouns. They're not my pronouns. They're not the words I choose to use. And they're certainly not accurate. Rowling claims the practice notes don't acknowledge that in sexual and violent crimes committed by men against women, there is a clear clash of rights. While a female victim has a right, indeed a legal duty, to speak truthfully about the male, uh, you know, what happened to her from this male to which she was subjected, the likely effect on traumatised women of hearing her attacker addressed and described as a female by the court is neither mentioned nor addressed in the practice note. This is what they're doing. They're trying to bully people into accepting that these mentally uh, deranged, predatory men who have a deep fascination with exposing themselves to women and children are in any way normal and are deserving of respect. They're really not. They're really not deserving of any respect. If they truly have a problem, they need to see a psychiatrist, not go to m and and buy knickers. And they put all the lady clothes on, get their big horn on, give themselves a quick one, because that's all this is. Uh, respect, she said, it seems to go only one way. Millions of women are losing confidence in judicial systems that have adopted an ideological position with which they do not agree. In the very place where they go to seek justice, a woman may now be obliged to listen to court officials asserting that they were, you know, attacked by a fellow woman. Such women are not merely anxious, they're furious about the apparent inability of certain men, judges or not, to understand how dystopian this situation seems to those of us who've suffered from this kind of stuff. She has, of course, been the victim herself, which is why I understand she knows fully well whereof she speaks. Uh, and that is why I listen to J.K. Rowling. This isn't just some random woman saying what she thinks people want to hear. She's been the victim. She knows. Uh, Rowling has become the vocal campaigner on the issue of women's rights. And we all stand with her. A bre the, idea, the irony is she's got more balls than all the men in the legal profession. Because they don't stand up and say, no, you can call yourself a woman, but you're actually a bloke. Take the dress off, love. You know what I mean? Put a pair of trousers on because you're going into court to be tried as a man. We're not going to put up with your BS any longer. Anyway, in 2020, she revealed she'd been the victim of this. We'd, we'd done that essay as well as DV. Uh, and in an essay, she set out why and an impact on her views in the transgender debate. Now, we have that. And then, of course, you've got this guy here uh, on the right. Uh, he's the one dressed up as a woman to attract girl into his car, child into his car, because this is who these people are. You have to remember, all these people are going, oh, well, we're not like that, we're not like that. And it's, don't listen to that we're not like that bullshit. We know from the figures they're 10 times more likely to be sexual offenders. And the argument that no one has ever done it is beaten into the ground by him. He actually did it. Andrew Miller dressed as a woman to entice children into his car because that's what these people are. Not all of them, I grant you. But they're 10 times more likely. Government-owned figures. And now we know that that is the sort of thing that happens. You cannot allow this, certainly not in a court of law, and it's certainly not in a case like this. It's going to get me angry, and I'm going to stop now before I do get angry. But I'm so with her on this, and all these places all around the world all say, oh, we're well, bowing down and kissing the ass of the trans lobby. Screw the trans lobby. They need psychiatric help for the 0.001% that genuinely are gender dysphoric. All the others need to be locked up because they're pervs and predators, and most of them peedy. Why do you think they all want to keep going in to schools and libraries and reading time and all, that's all that. Children, children, children. Tells you all you need to know about this movement, doesn't it? Anyway, I shall stop before I do get angry. The fact is reality 
has to win. And we also, <laughs> the thing I say a lot, we are many, they are few. 99% of people, 99.99% of people do not accept that mentally ill men who put on a frock are all of a sudden magically transmogrified into women because it doesn't work like that. They're just sad, inadequate men who get a horn on for dressing in ladies' clothes and usually have a penchant for children, which is why they keep going in. Like I say, at schools, they think, oh, look, oh, look at me, I'm in drag. Let's go in and talk to the children. All oh, children, yes. Creepy little fucks that they are. Not the children, the drags. But they're always pushing it. They're always want to go into children, want to be there. And these trans men, I want the right to go into a changing room where there's going to be women and young girls. Why? Just so I can take my clothes off and get my cock out in front of them, waggle it about. Because that's what they are. That's why they want to do it. Why did? Why is it they always want to go into changing rooms? Always want to get, oh, I want to go in the ladies' changing room, get my cock out. They all have them. 99%. Very, very few. Very, very few have it taken off. And most of them who do have it taken off end up with massive psychological problems as well as virtually lifelong physical problems. So they don't like getting the cocks off. So they actually just want to dress up and win. They, and then they all want to be lesbians, don't they? Lesbians, yeah. Because I'm a man who wants to sleep with a woman. You're not a lesbian. You're a straight man with a ladies' clothing fixation. You're an autogynophile who likes women. So you're not a lesbian. Not with your cock. Come off it. I'll stop. Thank you very much for watching. We all support JK Rowling. She's the best. Screw the rest. I'm out of here. One more video to go today. Possibly two, but one I think.